Check it in. Check, check, check. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? All 25 of you guys out there just ready to interview me with all these amazing game show questions. I'm ready to go. How about you? We're ready. We're ready. Hey, this has been a pretty amazing year for you in the cage so far. I mean, what's, uh, what's the feel like right now? Is things, you know, a couple of wins, a couple bonuses? Man, I'm golden, dude. I'm on top of the world, feeling great, happy, satisfied. I, I mean, my life has changed. 31 months ago, or 31 months, you guys didn't hear nothing from me. There was nothing happened. I, I suffered that severe injury. Um, it took a long time to get back, and it was a very struggling, unsatisfying process, very painful. But it's all changing, and it's because of the team around me. It's because my family around me, and it's because my will to want to succeed. So at this point, when you get to a fight week and you're trying to figure out your financial budgeting and all that, do you just count the bonus as like that's definitely coming home with me this weekend? No, I, I, don't, I don't ever count the bonuses. Um, what I do is just count for the win. And that's the thing is I'm, I'm here not to get a bonus. I don't care. Um, it's fun. That's awesome. It's amazing. But I'm here to get the victory. I didn't even know, like I kid you not, I didn't even know how much I was getting for this fight. I wasn't looking at the numbers because it's not about the number to me. It's about the actual fight itself. It's, I love this. This is passionable to me. The money is just extra. You know, it's just satisfying to, to get the victory and get that, that payment. But to exchange an X amount of dollars for the chance of winning, is it doesn't, it doesn't relate. What do you think about your last two performances? I mean, obviously impressive wins, um, but I'm sure you'd like to dominate more, not, not be tested, maybe not be quite as exciting or whatever. So how do you personally feel about the last two fights? Man, you know what? You, you saw a lot from me. You saw, you saw the skill set. You saw the heart. You saw the durability, you saw the will, you saw the want. I mean, they're the best fights you can watch. Those are the best fights you can learn from. And you can see me growing inside the octagon in just a short period of time. So do you want to be known as a guy that, like, you know, can, can be this warrior that can be tested and battle through it? Or do you want to be known as a guy that goes in there and, you know, throws one punch and knocks people out? Man, I want to be known as Julian Marquez, the guy that you want to get in front of the TV to watch, to know that, you don't know what you're going to get. You're going to get this spectacular, just crazy high-level performance or this just crazy knockout or this just amazing competitive fight. It, it's me. You're going to, no matter what, I don't expect anything. I don't want to be known for anything. Just know that that guy's not going to give up. That's awesome. And what, I mean, is being known as that fighter the most important thing? Because I know you've got a lot of interest outside of the cage, too, that are flourishing as well. So, but is that part the part that's most important right now, or is it the whole package? Man, I mean, what you see is what you get. Like, I'm not focusing on building anything, like a, a name for myself in the sense of being that fighter. Um, I'm more so of just looking to get wins, looking to have fun, and looking to enjoy my time, you know, because I've seen it get taken away from me and it was unenjoyable. And right now, I, like I said, I love, I love this. This is fun to me. This is exciting to me. This is something that I don't care what people think of me. I don't care what people say about me. I don't care how people would judge me. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about it. going in there, getting the win, having fun on the mic, having fun in these interviews, and just producing just amazing content. Yeah. All right. Talk about Jordan Wright, man. I mean, this guy has, has had some exciting results so far in his UFC career thus far. What did you think when this was the, the matchup? So I think it's amazing. I think it's a great stylistic matchup for me. Um, benefits me in the best sides just because, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a, just a different style of fighter than Jordan has seen before. Um, he's a very respected, you know, martial artist. And he comes from a great lineage. But the difference between him and I is that I have a coach on my side that is forever evolving with the game and is still a part of the game and is studying the game in and out. You know, he, he's battle tested and he tested all the techniques and all the process that we're doing in the game, you know, as we speak. I mean, we just let's talk about last week, almost another 24 hour fight notice or short notice fight. And he's about to take it like. That's, that's an actual leader that's going out there and showing you this, how we're going to do it. So having that on my side, having that and knowing like who I am, it just, it's a perfect matchup for me. Nice. Was there anything, I mean, see Jordan's kind of got kind of a unique style. Was, was there anything that you had to do differently or approach differently? Or is it, you know, kind of just approach the same as you would anybody else? 
Man, I, I approach the, every fight the same way as to evolve myself in one form or another. And I'm not sitting there looking at it like, oh, man, this guy has this or this guy does that. Because the thing is, if I worry about him, I'm going to forget about me. But I worry so much about me and build me and help myself grow to the point where he's thinking that, oh, I'm going to get him with this one move where I'm thinking I have all these different moves that I can get him with. And as you see in my other fights, you know, everyone's like, oh, he's going to knock him out. Your boy hit an anaconda choke that was sick as hell. Your boy hit a, a modified rear naked choke that you guys haven't seen. You know, and it's just because I'm able to go every location, everywhere in the fight, I can make it happen anywhere. That's because we're growing me as a fighter. That's awesome. Last thing for me, I mean, the goal here is, is the win. Like you said, that's the primary focus. Do you think about where it propels you to? I mean, like what you deserve, so to speak, next or what makes sense for you next? No, nah, not at all. I don't, I don't look past them. You know, right now I have this day in front of me and this person in front of me and that's all I care about like obviously we have long goals but for me to sit there and be like oh I want this I want that I want this that's called greed man pigs get slaughtered hogs get fed and right now I'm just being a hog for this one person well Simon I know you just said you don't like to think ahead but since you've come back from injury I feel like you've become a lovable guy people are starting to see you more and more but yet we haven't seen you fight in front of fans since you've come back we've only seen you in the apex is that something you'd like for your next fight to get out there in front of a roaring crowd Oh, man, you put me out in front of a crowd, everybody will fill the seats, everybody will scream as loud as possible. I've controlled the crowds many of times, and if you could see one of my fights live, it would just be, it's weight in gold. So if they give me that, let's go. If not, you know, I've been fighting without a crowd for quite a while now, and I mean, I got my contract without a crowd, so it's not going to change. It doesn't matter if there's people there or if there's no people. I'm, my, the result's always going to be the same. I'm still going to show up. And to be honest, I don't really even hear the crowd until after I win. And then I'm like, oh, shit. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Totally outside of fighting, because I, I always find humor in all the things that you say. What are you watching? I saw that you mentioned Squid Games. What else are you watching on uh, Netflix or whatever? What's, what's your jam when you're not fighting? Man, I, I, so I, I finished. I binge watched Squid Games when it came out, like right as like everyone started hopping aboard. Uh, my brother and uh, James Krause both told me to watch this. Wild. Um, I'm about to start Midnight Mass. Uh, I heard it's something close to like Blair Manor. Way better. I thought Blair Manor was terrible. And then uh, it's not as scary, but intriguing, just like uh, Haunting a Hill House, which I like that, those style of series. And I'm not a series guy. I always watch movies, things like that. Uh, so that's what I have right now. Um, I'm also on Apple TV. I'm doing the morning show, uh, which is just a, a newer style show. I'm going to start that. My uncle's telling me up and down, like, this is what you need to watch. He says it's great. So, uh, man, I just start watching whatever people suggest and if it's good and I'll give you the first episode. And if the first episode isn't worth it to me, then I'm out. Well, speaking of the Squid Games, you had asked uh, Twitter, and I was interested in what sort of feedback you got. You asked what childhood era game um, would you, you know, that people thought that that would, would make something interesting like the Squid Games. What were some of the fun answers that maybe you had? And do you have a, do you have a game that you think would make a, an interesting oh, man. game? We were, we were sitting there, and we were having a the discussion, and there's some funny answers like Ring Around the Rosie. Like, how do you change that into, like, a, a survival game? Or, like, Red Rover, Red Rover, you know? Like... Or how shitty would it be you'd like die playing kick the can? You know, like, <laughs> like, come on. So we were sitting there just coming up with all these just random stuff. And, and people were, were saying games that I've never heard of. And I, I can't even come off the top of my head with what they were saying. But it was just, it's kind of funny because every era presented a different, you know, style of game. Sure. Or every, you know, country has its own game. So we were just, kind of was just a good like night little talk, couple hours of just, Bull crap, and then the internet got involved in. But like, think about it. Like, how would you make freeze tag, like a an actual like survivalist game? Like, are you gonna shoot them with like a freeze gun, or are you gonna throw them in like, like, oh, you got touched, and you're gonna throw you in the ice pit? You know, like, uh, it would be wild. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, what are you jamming to on the uh, on the iTunes or the iPod? What are you listening to uh, music wise these days? Damn, dude, do we have an iPod still, bro? Like, <laughs> yes. Oh, my boy got the nano out. I see it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, man, I, again, I always listen to my girl, Miley. I listen to her stuff. Um, I, dude, I've been listening to a lot of J. Cole recently, Taylor Swift as well. Um, 
man, it's kind of just all over the place. There's a there's a, a rapper on the up and up. His name is Big Walk Dog. Um, probably like an up and comer, a little Gucci man style. And I, I just kind of like evolve with the music. Some days I like this, some days I like that, and I just enjoy it. What do you listen to when you're when you're working out? Do you go heavy or do you do you go lighthearted with the with the girls when you're trying to? Oh, dude, I go. I, I dude, I listen to like Tones and I Dance Monkey. I listen to Miley Cyrus. I listen to um, Taylor Swift. Something that just keeps the beat going. And like, and sometimes I'll go like super hardcore. Like I'll go Turnstile, hardcore punk, Spine Crew. Um, you know, Weekend Nachos. Just something just super grimy, heavy, and. But it just it all depends on how I want my uh, my heart rate to elevate and how hard I want to go at it. Awesome. Thanks for sharing.